hello welcome back to my channel this is a uh, week of the anointing uh bible study and also um hopefully by now you do have like a journal this is mine um as you can see well i'll just open it from this side all of these pages are written in it and these are the conversations that i've had with god um ever since like i've started being intentional about getting to know him um learning i i pretty much have a lot i think i have like two other journals but what i'm just trying to say is that it is quite crucial to just have books like this that even there's things or prayers that you believe in god for you're able to write it down because the book of habakkuk um i know a lot of people say habakkuk at this point i don't even know what to call it but the book of habakkuk um two verse three um, pretty much speaks about the importance of just writing the vision down because at the end of the day there's certain things that you need to bring to your remembrance and that is why even in the previous bible study we spoke about how god tells joshua to just always continuously meditate on the written laws of moses and we see the powerful part about having things that are written because you're able to come back to it you're able to touch on it. You're able to bring to your remembrance. Even when you lose the faith, you're able to be reminded. That once upon a time, I wrote this down and I truly believed God for it. And I'm stepping into a season of answered prayers. And that is why God tells us about the power of writing it down. So, get a notebook. Um, let this be your personal conversations with God. And even when you are a person who just wants to study your topic, I definitely suggest that you also write it down. I want us to touch on the book of Acts. I want us to touch on the book of Acts, Acts chapter 12. Because to be honest, um, this this Bible study was not a Bible study that I actually prepared for. And then we'll just let the Holy Spirit lead us. Because sometimes I feel like it's also important that you challenge yourself with the word. And just allow God to flow sometimes. Sometimes, you know, just just allow the Holy Spirit to flow. So I want us to go to the book of Acts chapter 12. Like I said, get a physical Bible. I'm reading in the NIV version for anyone who is interested. My Bible is in the NIV version. Well, the Bible... NIV version titles this as Peter's miraculous escape from prison. Today, I'm pretty much going to touch on the importance of faith. We're going to read from Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 12, verses 1 to 2 verse 16. And for this one, I think I'm just gonna a whole lot more on this verse. Okay, let, let's start reading. So this is Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 16. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. Verse 2, he had James, the brother of John, put to death with, a, with the sword. When he saw that this met the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. By the way, um, the people that Herod seems to be seizing here are the disciples of God. But we'll dissect it as we go. Verse 4, well verse 3 says, when he saw that this met the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Okay, Herod intended to bring him out for the public trial after the Passover. So it's in the midst of a festival. Herod captures Peter. He intends on killing him because he has already killed James. James is one of the disciples of Jesus, um, one of the disciples that we know, whose brother is John. John was also a disciple. Herod has killed James. He captures Peter to kill him after this festival. Remember, it's the unleavened festival. So verse 5 says, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. 6. The night before Herod was about to bring him to trial. So this is the night before Peter is about to just die and be killed by Herod. It's the final hour peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance and suddenly verse 7 an angel of the lord appeared with him and a light shone in the cell he struck peter on the side and woke him up quick get up this is what the angel says 
he said and the chains fell off peter's wrists verse 8 the angel said to him put on your clothes and sandals and peter did so wrap your cloak around you and follow me the angel told him peter followed him out of the prison and he had no idea what the angel was doing was really happening he thought he was seeing a vision they passed the first uh, and the second guards and came to an iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself. This is verse 11. Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel to rescue me from Herod's clutches and from any everything that the Jewish people were hoping would happen. Verse 12. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark. And remember that this John, it says the mother of John. The Bible has already told us that John is the brother of James, meaning that Mary is is is, is going through a period of grief and um, loss. She's going through a period of mourning for her son. Who is James so where many people were gathered and praying so the people were gathered at her house and praying verse 13 says Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door 14 when she recognized Peter's voice she was so overjoyed that she ran back without opening it and exclaimed Peter is at the door this is what she tells people verse 15 you're out of your mind they told her <laughs> When she kept insisting it was so, they said it must be his angel. So at this point, they are in disbelief. They have accepted the fact that Peter might have passed on because already the outcome was expected because Herod has already killed James at this point. So the outcome was pretty much expected that Peter is no more. And so that is why they're saying it must be his angel. Verse 16, but Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door, they saw, uh, they saw him and they were astonished. Okay, let's just read verse 17 for the sake of completion. Peter motioned um, with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said. Then he left for another place. We're wrapping it up there. So I just want us to actually dissect the story. Uh, we're going to touch on the importance of having crazy faith. In the story we see that that is exactly what Peter had. So we are going to touch on this story and the importance of having crazy faith when you walk with God. Now I want us to start this all over. We're going to start dissecting. It is a festival that is happening. Herod kills James, one of the disciples. The Bible tells us that James is the brother of John. Mary um, is going through a period of loss, grief, mourning, which is what I pretty much have touched on. Now we see that Peter is now captured. We see this in verse 3, that when Herod killed James in verse 2, the Jewish people, which we would describe as your enemies they were rejoicing at this point in time and because of that because they were so happy rejoicing all of it it resulted in them and in, in Herod becoming so happy um, and seeing that it obviously pleased him because this was some form of entertainment when you start reading the book of uh, Mark if I'm not mistaken there's just an important mind to Thing to bear in mind there because we see the same thing happening where Herod was being um, I don't want to say seduced but he was just being entertained by a lady because of that he asked this lady what is it that I can do for you to please you and she said she wants the head of John the Baptist on a platter which she was basically instilled to have those thoughts by her mom her mom was the instigator of all of this and so we see the same thing happening there where Herod had a lot of respect for John he feared John because John was a man of God but because of what the enemy wanted that is what he was doing he was just letting the outward influence of the enemy get to him and eventually we see that he indeed killed 
John the Baptist and put his head on the platter and we see the same thing happening here again where the Jewish people are rejoicing and they are just happy uh, fulfilled with what is happening during this entire festival and Herod decides because these people are so happy let me just capture another disciple and so he captures Peter he arrests Peter this is like the night before he arrests Peter and he intends on killing Peter first thing in the morning tomorrow so first thing tomorrow he intends on killing Peter now this is actually what I want to do to, 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 to dissect and tell you that to sometimes you might find yourself in situations where people hurt you because it pleases other people no matter how much form of respect or integrity that you can have you will definitely come across people who are always looking forward to your downfall people who are always rejoicing when the negative things happen to you we see the same thing happening here we had it kept as peter and it was so pleasing to the jews what was so pleasing with them seeing someone being put to death who is an innocent person they were rejoicing and being a child of god comes with these obstacles that you're gonna have to be okay with a lot of people going against you you're gonna have to be okay with standing against the majority because the majority will vote for you to get taken out we see this happening here where the enemy is pleased he is rejoicing that this is actually happening to peter and herod obviously is feeling himself he's feeling the vibe the atmosphere is obviously building up to the way that he's feeling he's feeling quite pleased quite satisfied he is feeling all sorts of emotions that he is about to kill another disciple of god and so this is just the important part of just recognizing the power that you have in christ peter when peter was seized we see that in verse 4 we see that he had four squads of soldiers which is four times four he had 16 soldiers accompany him as one man a disciple who is a man of integrity peter did nothing wrong there was nothing that he did he did not murder he did not steal he did not basically live in canality to say that he lived a destructive life to say that he deserved the snow all he ever did was believe in the most high and we see peter being held down by 16 soldiers and sometimes you just truly need to recognize your power in the most high king recognize your abilities in god because if you were not that important to the kingdom of darkness then that means something is not right sometimes you just truly need to recognize your abilities in the most high king peter was a faithful servant a faithful disciple of god he has 16 people holding him down 16 soldiers holding him down for no particular reason now this is obviously to show you how much the enemy is intimidated by the children of god we have 16 people hold him that on its own shows you affirmation that even when you go through storms and the enemy keeps rejoicing he holds you down he throws everything at you that truly shows you the extent and 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 the, the extent of your calling it shows you the extent of who you are in christ it shows you how important you are to even be a threat to the kingdom of darkness so we see peter being held by the 16 soldiers he's about to be taken he's chained cuffed all of it escorted by 16 soldiers to be killed the following morning now the interesting part about this is that peter was kept in prison and we see this in verse 5 now i want to show you the important part of actually so the important part of association verse 5 tells us that the church was praying for peter which also shows us the importance of being part of a church in the body of christ many people don't understand and think that the body of christ when we refer to a church that we refer to a building but a church is basically a gathering of saints the church was gathered in the house of mary a mom who is going through grief and loss and obviously we know what the expectation is because even so the church knew that peter was going to die we don't know what the church was praying for maybe they were praying for peter's soul to rest in peace we don't know maybe they were praying for god to rescue peter well that is obviously what we are thinking well well what i would assume we don't know exactly 
but this is what I'm trying to show you about having the importance of, of, of the right association having people who can intercede on your behalf having people who will able to who are able to stand in the gap for you the church was mourning they were going through hardships and difficulties they have lost a disciple the church is going through a lot including Mary she has just lost a son and this shows us the hard posture that we need to have when we lose a loved one because many of us do not want to be associated with other people when we lose our loved ones we don't want to talk to people we go through a period of just being isolated sometimes someone could just obviously withdraw and say I don't want to go through this loss again I've lost enough I don't want to be here let me go home and just get some rest let me be away from all these people and just really have some time to be on my own but God shows us the right heart posture that we need to have when we're experiencing hurdles in life, challenges and difficulties. Mary has lost her son and still she's interceding on behalf of Peter with the church when Peter is being held and thrown in prison. So this is what we see here. Verse 5 tells us that the church was praying earnestly to God for him. The church was interceding earnestly to God for Peter. It is quite crucial to be associated with people who will intervene for you. People who will pray for you and cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ when you're going through hardship. Because there are definitely going to be times where you don't even know what to say. There's definitely going to be times where you don't even have strength to even utter a word or even say a prayer. But let me tell you that the enemy cannot enjoy your silence. Even when you go through hardship, make sure that your mouth is never shut. And make sure that even if your mouth is shut, that you have people who are standing in the gap for you. Now this is what we see for Peter. Not even once in this text did we ever read that Peter prayed. Did we ever see that Peter called upon the name of Jesus. We never saw anything along those lines. Peter was tired. We see that Peter was so fatigued that he just didn't know what to say. He didn't have the words and maybe some of us are in that season where we just truly don't even know what to say. Where life just truly gets so hard and we start feeling that maybe we should just start accepting our reality. But maybe let's just actually sleep and maybe let's just see this tomorrow morning. But even so, the church was praying earnestly. The church was praying earnestly on Peter's behalf. And this is why the Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. It is important that you make sure that you gathered with people who are able to stand in the gap for you. People who will not leave you. People who will not forsake you when things get hard, when things even get harder on their life. People who can hold you hand in hand and say, you know what, we are both going through a lot. Let's go through this together. It is important to just truly have the right people who are grounded in the word of the Most High King. People who will have the right responses and tell you to not give up and encourage you to keep pursuing God and not let go of Him. It is important to be surrounded with people who will stand in the gap for you. We see the same thing happening with Moses, when the Israelites were fighting, going into the very first battle, the Israelites never had any form of soldiers or people who, who basically were in war. We see the Israelites going into the very this battle that they are fighting, and God tells Moses, "Lift up your staff and hold it." And every single time he held it high, the Israelites seemed to be winning. But when the hand got tired and he kept lifting it down, the Israelites were being beaten and they were losing. And Moses kept getting tired of lifting up his staff because the hand is getting painful to a point where he just started getting so sick and tired. But he had people who stood in the gap and understood the importance and, and how risky it is of having an intercessor that gets tired. Moses is surrounded by Aaron and her holding up his hand so that the staff could never be dropped. He is standing like this so that the Israelites could win the battle. It is important to have people who are not threatened by your position, but people who understand the importance of you standing where you are. People who understand the importance of being in formation with you. It is important to walk the journey of life with people who are not easily intimidated by you, but people who understand your calling, your anointing, and they see it. People who understand that there is a detrimental factor if this person does not come into realization 
foundation of who they are it is a crucial to be surrounded by people who call you to what God has called you to and they make you stand regardless stand the firm foundation and they lift up your hands they lift you up and they carry you even in the season of exhaustion the same way that Aaron and her did for Moses is what we see the church do for Peter and so Peter is quite tired because maybe he's coming into the reality of accepting that he is about to pass on he has just witnessed his brother in Christ pass on and he knows what the outcome would be from what he has just seen. Peter is accepting the fact that tonight might be his last night of life. Peter is just letting it all to God that, you know what, God? That's it. May you will be done. Maybe that's what Peter felt. We don't know, the Bible does not tell us. But I definitely could tell that maybe it was just Peter making peace that he is about to meet his creator. There's no way for me to step out of here. Firstly, Peter is guarded by 16 guards holding him and escorting him into prison. So now imagine the amount of guards surrounding him. The way Peter was captured in such a way that Herod did not want no mistake. He never even wanted Peter to slip out. The Bible tells us in verse 6 that Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound by two chains and sentries. Stood guards at the entrance. So there's guards at the entrance all over guarding Peter. Peter is sleeping in between the legs of a guard. He is bounded by two chains. How dangerous is this person? Sometimes this is what we need to recognize how dangerous we are in Christ. How dangerous are we that we have a creator who is in favor of us? How dangerous is it that people recognize the power of Jesus? That they would capture Peter to this extent and guard him down and chain him down with everything to make sure that this man does not escape. How dangerous are we in Christ Jesus that when people look at you, they already have plans that if I could just kill her, the enemy says, if I could just throw multiple accidents, that this person does not survive. The enemy says, if I could just truly keep throwing everything to make sure that this person does not escape this hit. How dangerous are you in Christ Jesus? We see this with Peter. He's captured. And from what we see from verse 6 is there's no way out for Peter. None whatsoever. There is no way that Peter can escape here. He's guarded by so many people. He's resting in between two soldiers. Now I want to make you, make you understand something. The Bible in verse 6 tells us that Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. They are guarding him. There's soldiers standing outside the entrance. Peter is chained, sleeping. The Bible doesn't tell us that Peter is anxious. The Bible t doesn't tell us that Peter is doubting his creator. The Bible does not tell us that Peter is, is, is confused. He's just staying up, hoping that something happens the bible doesn't tell us that peter is even going through a season of prayer the bible tells us that peter was sleeping the bible tells us that peter was sleeping <laughs> this is the importance of resting in the promises of the most high king peter knew who his creator was he didn't even have to open up his mouth and shout the name of jesus not saying that you should not but there's certain times that you need to be in a place of understanding that whether i do it or not god is still for me that whether i do it or not i'm a faithful child of god and god will show up for me it is crucial to have stubborn faith that even when your mind cannot comprehend how will i get out of this you need to believe in the most high king that everything responds to him the bible tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord we see here in the bible that peter is not saying anything but he is resting in the presence of the lord in prison about to be killed on the last hour peter is sleeping maybe peter did not want to see himself experiencing the pain of being killed maybe he didn't want to live through that and hope maybe hoping that they would just kill him in his sleep peter is sleeping resting in the promises of the most high king peter is trusting god because he recognized who his creator is he's going through a situation where there is no form of escape and he is resting in the promises of the most high king living in the will of god 
believing that God will do something. Maybe God will not take him out of it, but he truly believes that God will do it because if he didn't, Peter would not be asleep. Peter would be so frustrated asking the gods, what time is it? Peter would be counting down the hours. Peter would probably be telling the gods, tell my family that I love them and that I'm thinking about them. We don't see Peter bribing the gods and basically building an association with one of the gods hoping that they will rescue him out. We see the Bible tell us that Peter is sleeping. Peter is sleeping in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of obstruction, in the midst of everything working against him. This might be his last hour alive on earth. Peter is sleeping. Peter is also moaning the death of his beloved brother in Christ. Peter saw what happened to him is about to happen to him. We know that sometimes when we see circumstances and outcome happen for people and we end up being in the same place as they were, we understand that what happened to them might happen to me as well. But Peter is sleeping. And on the last hour, the angel of the Lord shows up. Verse 7 tells us that a light shone in the cell and he struck Peter. That's how asleep Peter was. He was deep in sleep. That the angel struck Peter on the side. I actually don't know why I just choked. <coughs> that was so unusual. The angel of the Lord in verse 7 strikes Peter on the side. He wakes him up. He says, quick, get up. That's how fast asleep Peter was. That the angel had to strike him awake. That even when the light showed in the cell that Peter didn't feel anything. Peter was fast asleep. He was just going through peace. And this is why the Bible tells us that let the peace that surpasses all understanding guide your mind and your heart in Christ Jesus. Peter is experiencing that peace and resting in the promises of the Most High King. Resting in the promises that God will do it and that God will show up. I don't care when God will show up, but God eventually will show up. Maybe it might not be in accordance to my timing, but I believe that the Most High King will show up. And so we see that Peter is going through that where the angel strikes him and tells him quick get up and the chains fall off Peter's wrists immediately that is how the power of the Lord works that Peter was enduring what he had to endure Peter has the strength to endure what God has called us to and that is what we need to start praying about for God to help us to endure what is, what is happening in our lives because let me tell you something the minute that you favor god you're going to experience a lot of endurance the bible tells us that character is built through endurance the bible tells us that even though we walk through the value of death we walk through it it doesn't say that god takes us out prayer should not be your way of worrying out loud. We don't see Peter worrying out loud in a form of prayer. God rescue me. God take me out of this. Because the minute you tell God what to do, that is not prayer. Prayer should never be about you worrying out loud, telling God what to do. It tells us that God guides us through it. Even when Shadrach, Abednego and Meshach went through the fire, they literally said bring it on they when daniel was literally seated with the king he when he was told to eat the food he said we see in the book of daniel that daniel does not bow down to other gods he doesn't even care that even if my god shows up or not i'm not gonna do it still he believes in who his creator is when ashadrach abednego and meshach went through the fire they saw the fourth man in the fire with them God helps us go through things. He doesn't take us out of it. Because it is you going through it, pruning you for what is yet to come. Yes, it is painful, but it is necessary for where God is taking you. So we see that Peter is going through endurance. And that is what we need to just start praying over for the persistence and peace and the strength to go through endurance that we need to endure the things that are set for us to endure. Yes, I am a Christian and a born again believer. There are things that I'm going to have to endure. There are things that are working against me in this world where, where things are supposed to be working for me. Peter is going through 
a season of enduring. Not even once do we see Peter worrying out loud. Not even once do we see Peter telling God what to do in the form of a prayer. We know that our faith decreases when our expectations are not met. And Peter was being held captive resting in the promises of the Most High King, which shows us that even when our expectations are not met, that is the season where your faith should be increasing and instead of decreasing. We don't have faith because we want our expectations to be met. We have faith because we believe in the one that we serve. The same way we see here when the angels striked Peter, that Peter did not know that it was God who was there. He wasn't even aware. He was probably just well, he just woke up. He's still confused trying to digest where he is. The same way that Peter was not aware that that was God is the same way in our lives that we will not be aware when God intervenes. We will not be aware, and that is the God that we serve, that he is a God who intervenes even when we are not aware, even when we are not expectant of him to intervene. God shows up. On the last hour when you're caught to giving up, the glory of the Lord shows up. The light shines in the cell on the very last hour where Peter's probably about to give up. God shows up. When you least expect it, that is where the Creator shows up. When you didn't think it was possible, God says all things are possible through me. And we see that in the book of Mark. We see this man going through and his son is going through an impure spirit. And, and as they're about to cast the spirit out of him, the man tells Jesus, he says, the disciples could not cast out the spirit from him. And Jesus says, you do not believe how long should I stay with this generation? And that shows us that certain things do not work because of our belief. God meets you at your level of belief. If that man had believed the same way as Jairus believed that Jesus would heal his daughter who was dead as the people had said, and that is why when Jesus truly touched him, he said she is sleeping and not dead. That is because that man had faith on behalf of his daughter that Jesus would do it. The man whose son had an impure spirit did not have that belief. And that is why Jesus says, how long will you not believe? He says, if you can. He says to Jesus, if you can. And Jesus is like, hey, <laughs> whoa, if I can. He says, if you can and jesus says wait a minute if i can he says things are impossible with men but all things not a few things he says all not selective <laughs> he says all things are possible through god is striked by the angel to wake up he is asleep the minute he stands up the chains fall off immediately he is a way maker and a promise keeper that even when you do not know how you're gonna get out of something he is the same god who makes a way where there isn't god meets you at your level of unbelief the problem of your belief god meets you at your level of belief the problem with this generation is that we only see god do things for other people and we're so quick to say god has favorites without even believing that he can do it for us jesus went back to his hometown and he healed a few people why because a lot of them saw him as the carpenter's son and a few saw him as the messiah a few and that is why jesus only healed a few and he kept going he kept going with this journey because God meets you at your level of belief. And so we see Peter here, a man of God who has always believed in the Most High King. He literally walked this journey with Jesus and saw the miracles that he could do. He is a man of God who just truly believes in the Most High King. The angel struck Peter, tells him to put on his clothes and sandals. And mind you, this is the same Peter who's resting between the two gods. The angel comes to him, tells him to put on his sandals, to put on his cloak and to follow him. Sometimes this is where God finds us. We are in situations where we are so messed up, where there is no way out. And he says, put your sandals on and put your cloak and follow me. We don't know where the Most High King is taking us, but God says the season, follow me. And so Peter follows the angel of the Lord. <laughs> we see that Peter had stubborn faith in this period that even he still does not fathom and he, he can't understand it. But Peter had stubborn faith in this season and the angel of the Lord says, follow him. He had no idea. The Bible says 
he had no idea what the angel was doing was really happening but even in the midst of that that's what verse 9 says he says it says he thought he was seeing a vision even in the midst of that we don't see peter asking questions of where are we going who are you what is happening and sometimes you just really need to be in a season where you don't have to always want god to answer your questions god why did i lose this parent at a very young age god why did that happen to me sometimes you need to find yourself go through seasons with on with questions that are unanswered peter does not even ask the angel of the lord why is it that god allowed me to be handcuffed and be and be put in prison he doesn't ask the angel of the lord why did god allow for for james to be killed he was the disciple of jesus christ why did god allow it peter does not ask god why and through this we see the importance of having to journey with God and believing in him and trusting him even when your prayers go unanswered even when the questions that you have go unanswered but Peter <laughs> but Peter in verse 9 it tells us that Peter had no idea what the angel was doing and what was really happening which shows us our level of trust in the most high king we see how much peter trusted god that he didn't even ask these questions he trusted god so much because everything that was happening he knew that god does not have evil intentions for him the bible also tells us that that god has good plans for us not to harm us but to give us a future and a hope and the book of jeremiah scripture says that and we see this in the book of acts that peter in verse 9 has no idea what is happening he thought he was seeing a vision he trusted in the most high king verse 10 says that they passed the first and the second god wait a minute <laughs> this man was held by 60 gods they are passing the first god and the second god and came to an iron gate leading to a city that opened at its own accord king walking with god hand in hand it entails it entails that that things need to move out of your way that god will move things out of your way so that you can walk into it the bible tells us that the word of the lord is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path we see that happening here that there is no form of obstruction that can hinder you from doing the will of god we see here that the gate opened at its own accord these soldiers and gods could have still captured peter he was walking hand in hand with the angel of the lord God tells us that when he has called you to something, there is nothing that will prevail. There is nothing that will hinder you in doing the will of God. There is nothing that will stop you from attaining what God has spoken. The word of God does not return to him void. That is what the Bible tells us. So when God speaks everything, his word precedes everything. <laughs> we see that happening here that even the gates open at its own accord god tells us that in our journey he says he will remove the bars of iron and the gates of bronze from our journey that is what we see happening here that the gate has opened at its own accord meaning that there is no form of obstacles no obstruction that could hinder what god is doing even though it may seem like it but god is a way maker that even when there is no way out you cannot understand how you're getting out of this you're throwing tantrums you're getting mad how could god lead you to a dead end like the israelites under the leadership of moses and moses tells them to stay calm he lifts up his staff and god tells him to lift up his staff and we see the red sea being parted he is the same god
last hour. He is a God of intervention who intervened when everyone thought it was done. God says it is not over until I say so. You need to teach yourself to be within proximity with Jesus. Walk in close proximity with Jesus that God, whether you do it or whether you